this big brown, flat, mysterious, crazy country, Telstra Mobile Net Digital presents Martin Malloy with Mick Malloy and Tony Martin. And today we've got an exclusive interview with Russian President Boris Yeltsin, who'll be denying he's dead, updating the Chechen situation for us, and sharing some of his favourite cocktail recipes. Mick's also got some great news for smokers today. We'll have a look at the claims of Burt Ward, TV's Robin, that he and Batman were crazed sex maniacs throughout the filming of the TV series. Oh, it's not a pleasant thought, is it? As always, we'll play Radio Gladiators and Moment of Truth. And joining us live for today's celebrity chinwag, it's Shane Bourne. Yes, it's all coming up on the show that refuses to grow up and face its responsibilities, Martin Malloy. A special treat for the youngsters. Martin Malloy. Forever now, that's chisels, of course it is, and welcome to another Martin Malloy people with uh, myself, Tony Martin, and this bloke, a man who's never been to Las Vegas, he's never met Heidi Fleiss, and if he had a spare <laughs> ten grand, he'd probably blow the lot on lollies and space invaders, as my mum would say, you Mick Malloy. And read me like a book, Tony Martin, <laughs> can't you? Yeah, how are you today, Mick? You can't ready? complain. In the uh, comfy seat Absolutely, there? Absolutely, because I'm afraid it's time, yes, people, get yourselves ready, it's time for World Focus with Mick Malloy. Mm, thank you, and welcome to World Focus. Please thank Gracie again on trumpets, leading the World Focus Tower of Power horn section there. Down to business. Russian President Boris Yeltsin has brushed aside rumours that he is in fact dead and was today seen on Russian TV working at a desk in the Kremlin Hospital where he's recovering from a heart scare. I'm very lucky to have him on the line now from Moscow. Boris Yeltsin, are you there? <coughs> Mr Yeltsin? Hmm. <coughs> Hello? Oh, Hello? Hello, um, yep. Mick, sorry, as you know, I don't go anywhere without my theme music. <laughs> there we go, sorry. sorry okay. about that. <laughs> Mr. Yeltsin, just a few questions. Yes, uh, fire away, Cobbo, without use of hesitation. Firstly, how's the recovery going? I am as fit as a violin, as you say. I am sitting up, mm -hmm. I am reading, I am drinking, I am drinking, I am, well, drinking. Really? I can walk. I can talk, I can squawk with the animals, and they can talk to me. Nurse, margaritas for everybody. Uh, Mr. Yeltsin, what, uh, what's going on in Chechnya? Nothing, nothing, nothing is going on. There is no bombing. It is merely a coincidence that everybody has decided to re-roof at the same time. So everything's fine. Good, good. Everything is dory hunky, as you say. Citizens can come and go as they please with little fear of electrical damage to the scrotum. And all your reforms are still on track? Oh, yes. Dick Crikey, for sure. We have more reforms than possibly can a dissident be counting on his remaining fingers. For example, not for any longer must one queue for borscht, mm -hmm. whilst obtaining a fresh cabbage is now, as you say, a chunk of piss. Right, there. then why are people still trying to flee the country? Oh, surely just to be buying the decadent Levi Strauss-style trousers and partaking in more of that American-style large mac and fries. A fuddy-duddy old-fashioned, please call me, but not for me, these Western bit-tits. <laughs> All right, so, so you're not worried about the current climate of unrest? Yet, way, Jose. Frighten me not, does it? N not one single brick am I excreting. Right, well, finally, Boris, is it true you've been signed up for the lead role in the W.C. Field story? Well, I guess I don't like to blow my own flugelhorn, as they say, but yes, I, I am, in fact, in hospital at the moment undergoing nose reduction surgery for the part. <laughs> Boris Yeltsin, thanks for your time. Thank you. I, I must go. It's it's happy hour and, uh, you know, nurse, nurse, another tray full of cabbage daiquiris, quickly, to bed number five. S-A-F-M. Mick, I have to say, you're looking a bit preoccupied mm. today. Something on the mind? Mm. What's going on? I've got my serious cap on today, Tone. <laughs> have you? I'd like to ask a question. What's going on in our hospital system? Do you know? No. Uh, have you heard about these new heroin programs? No, a, a free heroin program for people who are addicted. Right, yeah. yeah. They're, they're yeah, putting sure. them into hospitals yeah. around Australia mm -hmm. as we speak. And I, I thought it's interesting, isn't it? Because if you're at a hospital and you want to have a cigarette, 
you've got Buckley's. <laughs> you have to leave the building, skulk around the side, and bung your dory, right? Like, like, a, like, a, little, like a dirty little hobo. But if you want to hop into the smack, they set a whole room aside, and it's free. I went past a hospital the other day, and they were building a new wing. And I thought to myself, oh, great, at last somewhere safe to go and drop acid. Smoking, Tony, is a drug of addiction, and I am addicted. Where's my room? Where's my room full of free Winnie Blues, damn it? Here, take this down, Tony, take this down. Okay. This is what I need to cope with my addictions, sure. all right? Well, we'll try and get this organised. All right. All right, I need a room where I can stand around honking onto some Winnie Blues, free. <laughs> Uh, I'm also addicted to alcohol, so if we could have a bar in there, uh, sure, okay. I'll need all standard spirits, a yep. variety of beer, local and imported, mm. uh, maybe some quality tequila. <laughs> I'm addicted to the good stuff, Tone. Okay, got that. Yep. Uh, what else? Oh, I love a bet. Uh, <laughs> could, could we get some betting facilities? Uh, if they're racing, I like to get on. And maybe a couple of blackjack tables. Yeah, where are you going to put those? Uh, maybe near the pool tables? Pool tables. No, Tony, no. Sometimes I really feel like I personally need a game of pool, okay? <laughs> a free one. Okay, well, anything else you want? To... Uh, how about a couple of lap dances? Right, now, Mick, I... I know you're keen, but uh, are you badly addicted? Oh, I am after 35 <laughs> highly addictive bourbon and cakes, buddy. At that stage, I'll have you on my knee. Yeah, Mick, I, I don't think they'll approve of the lap dances, I have to what? say. Why not? How is that different to the topless barmaid? <laughs> OK, so, Mick, let me get this straight. I've got mm -hmm. this down here. What you want is a place where you can smoke, drink, gamble, bet, play a few games of pool and ogle women and not have to pay a cent with a privilege. Is that it? Yes, I, I really think that would help me deal with my problems, Tone. No, you're an idiot, Mick Malloy. Oh, OK, fine, Tony Martin, just fine. Don't you worry about me, then. I'll be out in the balcony having a smoke. But when you get home one day, just in time to see me scarpering over the back fence with your VCR under my arm, you'll wish you'd done more to help me, to understand my needs. Bought me a carton of Winnie Blues occasionally, maybe a call girl or two. But no, well, I hope you're happy. You only got For Australia's richest prize pool. Okay, what is the capital of Poland? Peter. Oh my god! What have I done? What have I done? Oh. Uh, no, I'm afraid the answer is Warsaw. Who is the Secretary General of Roger? Oh, why this place? Why this town? No, Boutros Boutros Gali. In what year were the Olympics, Judy? You murder I you kill my baby! Yes, all this week, listen to the incoherent wailing of the country's leading road drama actors as they collide head-on in the quest to become champion. OK, let's take a pick of the board, Judy. Uh, OK, Pete, tell us what we're playing for tonight. Tonight, one lucky viewer will take home a new car. Yes, and there it is there. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Get my baby out of the car! Oh, oh somebody get God. security. The Battle of the Road Safety Campaign Actors, all this week on Sale of a Century. Hey, everyone, have a look at what Nikki's wearing. Oh, oh my God! Oh, my God! What is she doing? Okay, good night. Say good night, Judy. Kill my baby. Bastard, you murder I. I hate you. I can't believe it. You murder I. SAFM here on Martin Malloy and just a reminder Shane Bourne's going to be popping in for a chat later on and also coming up Radio Gladiators but listen to this for a weird story mm. Mick British Songbirds Out of Tune is the headline and no it's not a review of the Eurovision Song Contest <laughs> Britain's Songbirds are going tone deaf because of the roar of traffic birds from wrens to pheasants have been so off key they cannot attract a mate I believe Jason Donovan had the same problem a few years ago. But said a prominent ornithologist, the bird calls have become distorted because of years of exposure to traffic noise. It's proof that roads and birds do not mix. Now, he's right, you know, I've actually got a recording here of a fully grown wren. Listen to this. And there's more. Listen to this. The uh, common blue tip. And, of course, at dusk, all the birds in the region will gather for their traditional mating ritual. There they go, yes. Yes, they're, they're very horny at this time of the year. Oh, I apologise. 
And uh, finally, that's, I think that's enough of the uh, mating ritual there, Gracie. Finally, here's a common household parrot who'd been raised very close to a major thoroughfare. Ever heard of an indicator, dickhead? Get out of my way, idiot! This is Martin Malloy. Play back after this for the... Here on Martin Malloy and Mink, I'm just checking the paper because mm -hmm. I think there's one of those David Copperfield magic specials on tonight. <laughs> Ooh, I'll be straight home after the show. Yes, yes, it is tonight. I think on Channel 9, yes, the mm. uh, Niagara Falls special. Have you seen what he's going to do in this one? No, what's, well, I'm, I'm familiar with some of his tricks. What's yeah. he doing tonight? Well, usually he's just got the swishy pants on and he's <laughs> maybe going to make, uh, what, the Statue of Liberty disappear? disappear? That was one of his. Walk through the wall, Great Wall of China. Did he do that? That's that was one of his, but today, he's, uh, what he's going to do is he's going to get himself into some kind of rig and go at balls. But as usual for David Copperfield, yeah. there's a lot of tricky kind of boxes involved. Nice. You know, he's not just going to get in a barrel like a normal person <laughs> and go over the falls. Oh, no, he's got to have some shonky-looking box with flyaway exactly. mirror bits. Mm. You just know mm. shonky stuff it's is like going a lunar on. module. <laughs> exactly. Basically, he's going over Niagara Falls in a lunar module. <laughs> but, I mean, is, how's he going to top that? I mean, that's pretty good, going over the falls. But what's he going to do next? Sounds like a Q4. Radio Gladiators, your chance to represent your state and win fame, glory and fabulous prizes. Here's today's challenge. He's an illusionist. <laughs> Did Is I that mention right? that he's an illusionist? So, so he's not actually wearing those stupid pants? <laughs> no. he's, he's, that is, he's not wearing them. That's an illusion. Don't call him a conjurer. Don't call him a magician. He goes off. He's an illusionist, and he does illusions. Like, you know, he's presenting that illusion that him and Claudia Schiffer are a happy couple, for example. <laughs> but what we're looking for today on Gladiators is a new challenge for David Copperfield. And it could be anything. Mm, it doesn't have to mm. be a traditional magic trick. Mm. Instead of walking through the Wall of China, it could be walking through an Australian city mall without being encrusted with pancake parlor brochures and Scientology <laughs> Absolutely. paperwork. Absolutely. We've all seen him make the Statue of Liberty disappear, but could he levitate our Deputy Prime Minister? <laughs> these, could he do that? These are the kind of Copperfield challenges <laughs> we're looking for. You're not doing it for nothing either because the winner will get, firstly, a three-pack of CDs, including the Batman Forever soundtrack. Mm. And you'll go into the draw for a weekend for two at Le Meridian at the Rialto Hotel in Melbourne. And, and you're speaking magic. You're speaking magic. You're speaking Le Meridian. That's right. Do I need to point out, Mick, to you that it is the soul of Europe in the heart of Melbourne. And that <laughs> sounds like a Copperfield trick right there, Absolutely. doesn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> so Get me to the Meridian now, if, David Copperfield. If you'd like to have a chance of taking a bite out of that prize bounty, call now at Radio <laughs> Gladiators 1-800-657-657.
that is. And let me just lay this out again. The, the challenge today <laughs> is to find a new bit of magic work for David Copperfield mm -hmm. to put his swishy Las Vegas gear to work on mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, he's going to be going over the falls and we need a new trick for him. However, a lot of people have been phoning up with suggestions for how McDonald's can advertise their goat burgers. <laughs> Are the time zones in Australia so out of whack, Mick, Absolutely. that some people are still getting yesterday's program? I think some, I think another station might be doing the goat competition today. <laughs> oh, I, I knew they'd be queuing up to pinch that one they off. They couldn't oh. get their dirty hands on it quick enough. <laughs> it's goat fever. But let's get back to Copperfield country. Who have you got on the line? Oh, I believe I've got Catherine on the line. Hello, Catherine. Hi. All right. Now, Copperfield, you want to see it. the master illusionist at work. What do you want to see him do? Well, since nothing else seems to be working, I try and get him to get the French from stop bombing at Miraroa. All right, OK. Mm. Send David Copperfield in the full spangly Las Vegas gear on the Rainbow Warrior <laughs> over to uh, the South Pacific. I think that would just encourage bombing, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. And they're doing a pretty good job of making that atoll disappear on their own as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Not bad. Have we got Grant there? Hi, Gra guys. How are you going? Good, Grant. Uh, there's actually three things I'd like to see him do. Mm. The first one's give Paul Keating more popularity. Mm, right. The second one is give John Howard more personality. Mm. And the third one is I'd like to see him shove one of those atom bombs up uh, Jack Chirac's clacker. Okay. <laughs> oh, look. Well, that's, that is a pretty everyday request. I'm sure he gets letters like that a lot at home. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. So what, you want Paul Keating more popular, John Howard what, more personality? Come on. He's an illusionist, not a miracle worker. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Have we got Michelle there? Michelle, what's your suggestion for David Copperfield's next special? Well, I'd like him to synchronise everyone's clocks and watches to be the same time, so I'm not the only idiot at school an hour earlier when daylight saving comes along. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, I'm known as the stupid lady that turns up an hour earlier. Yeah, well, then you... I forgot all about it, and when it was time to pick the kids up, I was there an hour early as well. <laughs> oh, well, that's a terrible story, Michelle, but you're now known as a stupid lady right across the country, <laughs> exactly. I'm afraid. And, and Michelle... I really think that's a suggestion. You should be you should be waiting for the Yuri Geller special. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It's watch driven. Yeah, that's more Geller than uh, Copperfield. Have we got Shannon there? Shannon. Yeah. What's your suggestion for David? Uh, I think he should set himself on fire. Then he'll have to like click his fingers to put himself back out again. Yeah, that's not bad. But I just like to see him set himself on fire. <laughs> and then not put himself out. Just leave it at that. How about that for a trick? And we just watched David Copperfield burn to a cinder for an hour. <laughs> yeah, that's that's As not I'm a, watching. <laughs> I can see you really the TV programmers should be contacting you a bit more, Mick Malloy, but which is gonna be our winner? Anyone foolish enough to expose themselves as stupid lady on national radio <laughs> deserves some sort of compensation to you, Mark. Michelle? Yeah, I am. <laughs> you've won yourself, well, three CDs and you've gone into the draw for that weekend at the uh, Lur Meridian at the Rialto in Melbourne. Yeah. Well, thank you. And, and, are, and they only serve dinner between six and eight, so check your watch. All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Michelle, and stick around, listeners, because, well, after the news, we'll be having a chat with Shane Bourne. This is Martin, South Australian Fresh Food Shoppers. To... John Williams with an SAFM. And in this hour, another moment of truth. The outrageous sexual powers of TV's Robin Burt Ward. But next up, Shane Bourne on Martin Malloy, the show that's propped up by Telstra Mobile Net Digital. SAFM. Hey, 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 we're on the radio, Gracie. It's a professional program. Oh, seamless as ever, gents. Well done. We've got the tuxedos on every single day when we do this program. We're fumbling about like a bunch of amateurs. Well, hey, it's just all part of life's rich pageant here on Martin Malloy. Never miss your waters, the name of that track by Diesel. And uh, as we get ourselves together here, it's time to welcome our guest. And this bloke, he's not 100% today, but he's mm. popped in anyway. He's, uh, well, he's getting rave reviews for his performance in a play called The Moonwalkers, which is currently knocking him dead at the Stables Theatre in Sydney. He's uh, had the suit of feds. Please welcome <laughs> him on board. It's Shane Bourne. <laughs> 
Crane, thanks for coming in today. Well, a great pleasure it is, Tony, and an even greater pleasure, Mick. How you're not, are you, you're not that well. What's, what's wrong? Well, I won't bore you with the details, but when I was three, <laughs> uh, started getting sinuses. Oh, right, it's okay. recurred, and also, I've been on this fabulous cortisone spray. I highly recommend it for parties. Right. Um, <laughs> it just makes you, gives you a little bit of a lift, and you feel a little bit more convivial. Apparently, Mike Whitney's into the cortisone pretty heavily. That's what we <laughs> first. <laughs> well, it is actually someone, I didn't realise it is steroids. So, steroids for the night. I'm looking forward to the Carl Malden um, <laughs> popping up pretty... Uh, actually, someone uh, in the street, I was in Sydney the other day, and uh, you walk, you know, walking through the crosses, you do, and uh, someone said, Oi, I know you. You're that bloke with the big nose. <laughs> Which now, you know, I mean, I know it's not, you know, it's not a button. <laughs> That's not how you like to be promoted, really, is it? No, I tend to work front on a lot <laughs> for that reason. I think they might have mistaken me for... Um, because after doing the Steve Martin play in Sydney, people got a bit confused because they had Steve's head all around the place. Right. <laughs> Steve wouldn't kind of buy into it when we were doing the workshop for the play. People went, gee, you guys, and he went, no way. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us, how was it working with Steve? It was fabulous, yeah. I mean, he eventually came up to scratch, I thought. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, coaching. Yeah. I saw that. That was a, a great play, Shane. Did you, your part seemed to be the most Steve Martin-ish of them all. Did he, did he groom you for that role? <laughs> Yeah, we did after hours stuff. Right. We did for me workshop. <laughs> and uh, no, not really. I just think maybe it's uh, just a bit of a similarity there. I mean, he wrote the thing um, not with himself in mind. Uh -huh. um, and uh, but people used to actually, you'd feel that, especially in Sydney, probably where I haven't worked as much. You'd walk on stage and you'd see people's kind of expectations lift just for about five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's him. And then as soon as you open your mouth, you know... They oh, go, oh, brother. no, it's just that bloke with the big nose. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, I believe Steve gave you his bike, is that right? Well, he wasn't quite that... He was a very generous man, actually, to work with. He was fabulous, and it was pretty awesome, as you can imagine. But he donated his bike, the famous bike, because uh, this was a couple of years ago when uh, we were doing the, uh, the workshop in Melbourne. He used to ride his bike into... Uh, into the rehearsals, as I did. I had the old 28-inch Melbourne Star. Right. He had a bit of a zappy kind of um, mountain job. And uh, he donated the, um, the bike to the, the Playbox Theatre. So I nice. put up my hand. I bought it. I had to buy it because there's a bit of a history to it as well. When he was in Melbourne, the press were going berserk trying to get photos of him. Yeah. And he's very good at avoiding it. And they ended up publishing, I think, on page three of the Sun-Herald, a photo of his bike. San Steve, just the bike. He was trying to avoid them, but there was a bit of a giveaway because his bike helmet had the arrow through it and the bunny ears. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they were able to track him and, down. And the other thing is, when you ring his bell, it doesn't go ding, it goes, excuse me. <laughs> oh, of course it does. Well, I think we've exhausted the Steve Martin material there. <laughs> and Shane, can you stick around for a while? Love to. Because we want to talk about your new play right here on Martin Malloy. And we'll be restoring normality as soon as we're sure what is normal anyway. Martin Malloy on SAFM. To see if it, you've got us on the all-new SAFM. And Shane Bourne's on the panel with us today. Uh, Shane, do you mind if we call you Borny? You can call me Borny. Because we love the showbiz abbreviations. We had Gilbo on the show yesterday. How is Gilbo? <laughs> He's not bad. We had Sando Chilaro on Friday. Chill. <laughs> and the day before that, we had Linda Gibson. Gibbo. Fantastic. And tomorrow, I think we've got Tony Barber. What would that... Would that be Barbo? Barbo? <laughs> Looking forward well, to it. You can't go Tony, can you? No, you can't. He doesn't Did you like see that. Barbo on, um, on uh, Club Buggery? No, what did he was he singing a song? Oh, well, he did with Turpy at the end. He oh. likes to sing, doesn't he? He likes a bit. He doesn't of a have while. to be talked into it. They Just were singing New York, New York. Of course they and, were. You know, he was handballing during I'm it. Surprised he wasn't weird. something from the Les Miserables soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Goes for that too. We'll be trying to get a medley out of him on the show tomorrow. I think they mixed him out of that album. Didn't they? <laughs> I think they might have. Now, Shane, what are you doing at the moment? Another play? You're just theatre boy these yeah, days, no, aren't I've you? Gone, I've gone mad, haven't I? What happened to the days when it was you and Murray spilling gags everywhere? What was <laughs> <laughs> now you're just Mr. Serious, aren't you? Actually, no, I'm not Mr. Serious. Um, I'll tell you what, I was thinking about that, because with this flu, mm -hmm. I actually, th I, I think that's, if you want to do an impression of Maury, imagine you got the flu, <laughs> then you'd get the poor bugwell, son. <laughs> yeah, I got the bloody flu, you bugwell. Hey, hey, put Shane back on. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, thrill seekers. Hey, ho, hey, ho. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's him. There we go. That's Borny. Yeah, no, the gags, I'm still doing heaps of stand-up. I just did a tour with uh, the Umbilical Brothers, which was... A blast. Yeah. That was fun because they mainly jump around and 
uh, make noises and are funny, and I stand still and don't. So that was kind of... Uh, and did you get together for a bit of a number? We did. We did an encore. We ended up doing... It just a thing that kind of evolved. It was quite organic. We ended up uh, doing uh, It's a Long Way to the Top if you want to rock and roll. All right. Full on, because I play a bit of guitar these days, through the distortion pedal. Sounded very uh, authentic. And some of the gigs, I mean, when you're out in the sticks, they kind of... Uh, they're not looking for the real thing. They went with it. <laughs> they're talking about, they were punching the air. You didn't have the mouth organ out, did you? Uh, well, occasionally the organ. Yeah. It has <laughs> been known to slip out, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it has. But it's, I'll tell you what, I, I confess it's a beautiful, like if you're in a bit of trouble <laughs> and you forget who you are, what you are, where you're going, whip out the organ, have a blast, because you've been thinking time, really. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had one now. <laughs> Good job. Now, Shane, thanks for coming in today. What a pleasure. Now, can I plug the play? Yeah, that I'm you've doing? got to get it in now, quick. Yeah, it's called The Moonwalkers. <laughs> All right. It's on at the Stables Theatre, which is in uh, King's Cross. It's a bit of a killer. It stars Tara Maurice. Yeah. Um, people would know from all the movies. Lyndon Wilkinson, who's the girl who says, I'll have what she's having on the, uh, <laughs> what is it? Some right, stuff ad or something. Yeah. Another young uh, guy and myself. Oh, great. And um, I spent a bit of time in the boxer shorts, which is interesting. I don't know if you ever saw that Seinfeld episode <laughs> when he had the boxers on. I'm out there, Jerry, and I'm loving every minute. <laughs> That's you. That is me. Switchboard's it just lit up. Yep. <laughs> People want tickets now. <laughs> <laughs> and we hear when the play gets a bit boring, out comes the mouth organ. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for coming in today, Shane. Thanks, guys. And uh, we'll be back with more in a moment on Martin Malloy. I love to play jokes on good friends like you. Martin Malloy on SAFM. Let her cry. That's the blowfish with Monsieur Hootie right up the front there. Here on Martin Malloy and Mick, I was just around at the photocopying, mm. doing a bit of photocopying because that's a kind of on-the-edge lifestyle mm. I lead. Mm. And the photocopier here, it's talking to me. We've got one of these really sophisticated photographs, oh, okay. and little messages are coming up on the little screen. Uh, and it's going, I need toner. <laughs> I need maintenance. Call this number. And I'm thinking, it's just all about you, isn't it? <laughs> it's just me, me, me with that photocopier. What about my needs, Xerox? It gets you every time, though, Tone. I've told you. Treat it mean. <laughs> I've told How many times did I tell you? But you let it get to you. It plays you like a heart. Oh, look, enough of this banter. It's time for... Moment of truth. It's a bloody simple competition, people. We established yesterday it's multi-choice. That's really how it works. You have to just pick the right letter and you're up for prizes galore, including, well, firstly, you're getting a copy of the Max Sharam album, mm -hmm. A Million Dollar Girl, and that's the finest album released this year under that title, I believe, I'm told. By were, were you looking know. for an argument? Oh, no, no way, because then. That's just the start of the cornucopia, because then you're into the draw for a week for two at Belbray. Hello! Australia's only boutique health retreat. And oh. we've talked about Belbray before. Mick, you've been to Belbray. Mm. Paint a picture for us. Oh. Have you seen... Did you ever used to watch, watch the Waltons? Tone? <laughs> You know, you know that big house the Waltons lived in. Yeah. That's saying Belbray to me. <laughs> you, at that night before you go to sleep, it's you know night, Maury, <laughs> night, Gwen, Maury and Gwen. They run the joint up there. Yeah. And what are they like? Are they? Is it cruel but fair? No, Tony. No, it's just luxury all the way. Is it's it, India. <laughs> they're India, non-stop. Is it? Uh, is it drinks with umbrellas? Yep. Is it uh, Lilo's Ahoy? Just yep. swimming pools yep. everywhere. Is it, uh, is it the backdoor colonic irrigation kind of work? Do they turn the sprinklers on? No, Tone, no. They, they do that before you go. <laughs> oh, I I, the night before I was due to leave, I woke up. There was three of them in the room. I was hooked up to the back of a fire truck. And, <laughs> and let's just say, they get all that out of the way. They turn it up to 11. So, <laughs> turn it up to 11. So they get out of the way. So, so when you go up there, you're clean of mind and clean of body. Well, and then it's just... Fun, fun, fun till Maury takes the T-bird away. <laughs> oh, I think we've we've painted an irresistible cocktail of luxury. Oh, we've only just started. That's just the tip of the iceberg at Belbray. So get on the phone now. If you have to sit our producer, look at his watch and I know what he's thinking. We're in trouble. But uh, call now to play Moment of Truth, 1-800-657-657. This is Martin Malloy. Fantastic, I can hardly believe it. I always think I've heard everything and then something like this happens. Brought to you by Telstra Mobile. Coming Net. home with Martin Malloy. We're playing Moment of Truth. Mick, who have you got for us today? We've got Rob on the line. Hello, Rob. Hello, how are you 
going? Good, mate. How are you? Very well. All right. You're our player for today. How about that? Oh, that's fantastic. And, of course, Rob, you know how the segment works. Oh, well, I listen to it, but you better tell me again. <laughs> OK, Pete. Four facts. Only one of them actually true. Can you pick the moment of truth? OK, lads, let fly with the porkies. He does get a check for 49 bucks every time we play that, Rob, so you understand. We have to, oh, yeah. <laughs> have to give it a run. Now, here's today's question on moment of truth. The real name of Lee Majors, the actor who wrote to fame playing the $6 million man, is A, Harvey Lee Urie II, B, Lee Harvey Oswald, C. Tommy Lee. D. Steve Austin. I'd say A. Yes. <laughs> Harvey Lee Yuri the second, a man barely alive. How did they get the second? You'd think after the first, <laughs> that person in particular would know. Did you used to watch the Six Million Dollar Man, Rob? Oh yeah, definitely. Do you remember it fondly? Oh, fondly. Very fondly. Did you like the $6 million woman? I, yeah, I'd prefer the bionic woman than the $6 million man any day. Yeah. yeah. I think there was a bionic dog at one stage. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a question, Gracie. No, just keep the drums down. OK, Rob, you've, uh, well, you've won a copy of the Max Sharam album. Fantastic. That's a beauty. And you've gone into the draw for a week for two at Bell Bray. Does that have you just on the edge of your but seat? I'm on the edge of my car seat, actually. <laughs> oh, Keep your hands on the wheel there, Rob. <laughs> and yeah. thanks for playing Moment of Truth. S-A-F-M. Here's a bit of juicy showbiz talk. Excellent. This is out of the papers. Batman's TV sidekick has revealed the caped crusaders were sex maniacs. Bert Ward, who played the clean-cut Robin in the 60s TV series, says no woman was safe from the Gotham City superheroes. <laughs> in his autobiography, My Life and Tights, available now, I believe, <laughs> Ward says he once made love to eight hookers at the same time. He joined the Mile High Club in the middle of a fierce windstorm that he and Adam West, Batman, of course, were chased out of a nudist colony after spying on couples having sex... <laughs> and that they watched each other make love in full costume. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> now, excuse me, apart from anything, I don't think that's an authorised use of the Batman trademark and uniform. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be getting some calls. But uh, let's keep in mind this isn't the sexy 90s rubber gear movie version of Batman we're talking about. I know several women who find that sort of chunky Val mm, Kilmer-style mm. Batman costume quite a turn-on. But this is the Peter Pan tights TV <laughs> version. You know, Adam West with a bit of paunch hanging over the utility belt, a bit of sweat stain under the arms, a cape made out of polythene. But as for Robin, I just can't picture eight hookers making love to a bloke in an elf costume. When I think of sexual dynamo, I don't think of someone in pixie boots and a costume that Aunt Harriet's run up on the Husqvarna. Remember that red shirt he had with just like the letter R written on in felt pen? <laughs> I can understand the bit about being chased out of a nudist camp because you're not exactly going to blend into the background dressed as Batman and Robin, are you? <laughs> the Riddler, maybe. He was just a big nude bloke painted green, as far as I could tell. But <laughs> Sorry, I'm just getting a mental image. Imagine <laughs> Batman and Robin undercover at a nudist camp in full costume, but just nude from the waist down, <laughs> swanning round the volleyball court going, citizens. <laughs> But listen to this, this is a true story. When I was a kid, Batman and Robin actually came to our school for uh, some sort of road safety demonstration. <laughs> and even at age 10, we could see it wasn't the real Batman and Robin. It was just a couple of out-of-work local actors, because, well, for one thing, in the TV show, Robin didn't have a beard. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, we're all out the front of the school. They've leapt out of the Batmobile. Batman slammed the driver's side door shut and jammed his cape. Then it turns out he hasn't left the handbrake on and the Batmobile started rolling down the hill, this is true, pursued by 200 school kids, a bearded Robin and a capeless Batman is shouting at the car, Barry! Barry! And we're all wondering who Barry is. The Batmobile slammed into a tree and up from the back seats popped a clearly pissed old bloke dressed as the Penguin <laughs> who said, Christ, have we started? Do not adjust your radio. Martin Malloy on SAFM.
That's Sonia Data. You ain't thinking about me right here on... Martin Malai. Well, you may have read about Jake, the Irish golden Labrador who was kidnapped because of his success in sniffing out drugs. Jake was rescued safe and sound after a nationwide search and he's now a national hero in Ireland. And we're very lucky to have him on the line now, live from Police Sniffer Dog headquarters in Dublin. Jake, can you hear me? Oh, thanks very much. I didn't know you listened. What? A knock-knock joke. All right. Who's there? Hugh who? Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, sounds like that one's gone down a storm there at the pound. Sorry, Sniffer Dog headquarters. Which brings me to my next question. Drug sniffer dogs are often accused of perhaps being just a little bit close to their work, if you know what I mean. Was that a sneeze? You haven't been getting stuck into the confiscated merchandise? <laughs> Change the subject, gotcha. Jake, now that you're a celebrity, you're obviously the target of a lot of gossip. In fact, you've been linked romantically with the new Lassie. She's quite a babe. I'll take that as a yes. You've also been accused in the press of being a bit thick. I'd like to test you out now, if that's all right. Could you tell me what one and one is? Jake, is there someone there helping you? Okay, finally, I believe as a result of your newfound fame, you've had several offers to do TV commercials. Really? The Advanced Hair Studios? Well, let's hear you do the Greg Matthews catchphrase, yeah, yeah. Okay, Jake, thanks for your time. A dog of a show, Martin Malloy. Completely drenched in Gatorade, listeners. Back after this song on the all-new S. That soft sell, all oh, the 80s are coming back mm, to me. Just, right. Just as well that we can sign off now and I can go and put on my whole tainted love soft sell extended mix. Absolutely. Something to you know. leave the listeners with. <laughs> Indeed. We've got to sign off here at Martin Malloy and we must, uh, let's see. Well, before we go, we haven't had time to mention Sinead O'Connor. Mick, mm. did you hear about her? Mm. She's pulled out of the big Lollapalooza tour because apparently there's this massive heat wave in America. Mm. We've heard about that. Whenever she gets up on stage and starts singing, she feels like vomiting. <laughs> Which I suppose <laughs> saves the audience the trouble. Absolutely. We, we have a sim similar problem with listeners to this program, Tony, but really? it doesn't seem unseen. Oh, no, no, I can't explain that. Go home and watch the weather tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Find out what's going Look out, on. folks. There's a high pressure system coming in over Sydney. It must be that. It, must, it can't be the material. But thanks to all our guests today, Shane Bourne, Boris Yeltsin and Jake the Sniffer Dog, and all our valiant gladiators, as always, tomorrow we'll be joined by the man himself, Tony Barber will be injecting a bit of showbiz into the program. But until then, remember, if you can't say something intelligent, come talk to us.